Assange prosecution relied on false testimony from a diagnosed sociopath and convicted pedophile. The Icelandic newspaper Stundin reports that a key witness in the U.S. prosecution of Julian Assange has admitted in an interview with the outlet that he fabricated critical accusations in the indictment against the WikiLeaks founder. A major witness in the United States Department of Justice case against Julian Assange has admitted to fabricating key accusations in the indictment against the WikiLeaks founder, Stundin reports. The witness, who has a documented history with sociopathy and has received several convictions for sexual abuse of minors and wide-ranging financial fraud, made the admission in a newly published interview in Stunden where he also confessed to having continued his crime spree whilst working with the Department of Justice and FBI and receiving a promise of immunity from prosecution. This major witness would be Iceland's Sigurdor Sigi Thordarson, a paid FBI informant who, after his short-lived association with WikiLeaks, has been found guilty of sexually abusing nine boys as well as embezzlement, fraud, and theft in his home country. A court-appointed psychologist has found him to be a sociopath. The court found that Sigurdur was, by all definitions, a sociopath suffering from a severe antisocial personality disorder. However, the court found that he did know the difference between right and wrong and could not be considered insane and therefore could stand trial, Iceland Magazine reported in 2015 during Thordarsson's child abuse case. This was all public knowledge when the U.S. government was building its case to extradite Julian Assange to America and try him under the Patriot Act for journalistic activity which exposed U.S. war crimes, a prosecution for which Assange is still locked up in Belmarsh Prison pending Washington's appeal of a U.K. court's denial of the extradition request. And now we know for a fact that the odious person whose testimony formed the basis for much of that prosecution was lying. U.S. officials presented an updated version of an indictment against him to a magistrate court in London last summer, Stunden says. The veracity of the information contained therein is now directly contradicted by the main witness whose testimony it is based on. What this means is that the U.S. decided to add more accusations to its previous indictment because charging a journalist for standard journalistic practices was too weak on its own. And now this decision has bitten them in the ass. The article's authors explain that contrary to the claims in that indictment, Thorson now admits to Stunden that Assange never asked him to hack or access phone records of MPs, and further admits the claim that Assange had instructed or asked him to access computers in order to find any of such recordings is false. Thordardson's testimony was cited extensively by British magistrate Vanessa Baratzer when she was providing her ruling on the extradition request, which is currently under appeal, which looks pretty silly now that we know it was bogus. Her ruling repeats the prosecution's claim that Assange asked teenager, that's code for Thordardson, to hack into computers to obtain information including audio recordings of phone conversations between high-ranking officials including members of parliament. But Thordarsson has now recanted this claim. While the judgment on the extradition request reads, it is alleged that Mr. Assange and teenager failed a joint attempt to decrypt a file stolen from a NATO country one, that's code for Iceland, bank, Thordarsson told Stunden that this actually refers to a well-publicized event in which an encrypted file was leaked from an Icelandic bank and assumed to contain information about defaulted loans provided by the Icelandic Landsbanksky, and that nothing supports the claim that this file was ever stolen per se, and it was assumed to have been distributed by whistleblowers from inside the failed bank. While the ruling repeats the claim that Assange used the unauthorized access given to him by a source to access a government website of NATO Country 1 used to track police vehicles, Thordarsson told Stunden that Assange never asked for any such access. These revelations are entirely damning. 
This is the end of the case against Julian Assange, tweeted NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden, adding, If Biden continues to seek the extradition of a publisher under an indictment poisoned top to bottom with false testimony admitted by its own star witness, the damage to the United States' reputation on press freedom would last for a generation. It's unavoidable. Now it's time to have an international inquiry on how Sweden, UK, US, Ecuador, and Australia have handled the Julian Assange case. My FOIA provides evidence nothing is normal in this case, tweeted investigative journalist Stefania Marisi. It just says so much that the most powerful government in the world, with all its essentially limitless resources, needed to build its case against Assange on false testimony from a diagnosed sociopath and convicted child molester. That's how strong their case was against a journalist whose only crime was telling the truth about the powerful. This after we learned that Assange and his lawyers were spied on by the CIA, that he is being tortured, that his seven-year de facto imprisonment prior to his two-year stay in Belmarsh was arbitrary detention and unjust from the very beginning, and that the pretext for keeping him there was itself fallacious. This is a farce. The fact that this man remains behind bars is an outrage.